Hello, student. Everything good? Um, yeah. You seem awfully cheerful today. That's because I just read about Holmberg's theory of interaction and communication, my friend. Did you notice that I'm addressing you informally, and using as many personal pronouns as possible? Why are you doing that? Holmberg says that the atmosphere, language and conventions of friendly conversation foster feelings of personal relation, and that a good relationship between tutor and student helps a student take greater pleasure in their study and be the more motivated. Let's build rapport and have a good relationship. It is time for me to take an empathy approach. Honestly, this is creeping me out a little. I'd rather just get on the computer and work on my course, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all, dude. You know why? Because Holmberg says that these feelings can be fostered both through two-way communication and self-instructional material. You lost me. Well, you know how when you read books by your favorite authors, you feel like they are speaking directly to you? It's like that. So you can have this pleasant interpersonal relationship with me, your instructor, when we email, or meet face to face, or talk on the phone, but you can also have a simulated personal relationship with the author of your instructional materials. I don't really want to talk about our relationship. So I am going to segue into a conversation about how to apply Holmberg's theory to self-instructional material. While you are rambling on about it, I may or may not sneak away. Sounds like a plan. I do love to ramble on. You see, Holmberg is a constructivist. He says that teaching is really just facilitation of student learning, so it is a teacher's responsibility to choose and create materials that are accessible to the student. Conversational language is one way of doing that, he says students retain information better when it is presented in everyday terms, but there are other techniques. Making the course relevant to the student's interests and engaging the student emotionally are other approaches, he suggests. No offense, but that sounds like common sense to me. How does this apply to distance education? According to this theory, the variety of media that can be used in distance education can facilitate this relationship building, both real and simulated. Video, audio, images, and even various typefaces and page layouts can be used to make the material more accessible and more engaging. He has some specific suggestions as well. You're pausing in the hope that I will engage in Socratic dialogue with you, aren't you? I am trying to be a Holmberger. Okay, okay. What are Holmberg's specific recommendations? To have flexible schedules. To let students work at their own pace. To give students a chance to digest new information before engaging with the tutor about it. To give students very specific guidance about how to complete academic tasks. Do teach students about intellectual honesty. To require students to use primary sources and seek out their own information. To facilitate the development of critical thinking skills. Do use a friendly and personal tone. I am assuming there are some thou shalt nots as well? Correct. Don't overwhelm students with too many choices. Give students opportunities to collaborate, but don't force the issue. Don't get too aggressive about this personal relationship thing and freak the student out. Holmberg didn't say anything about that. I think it goes without saying. Do you feel that you engaged emotionally with today's lesson? I am definitely feeling emotions right now, yes. You know they put Socrates in jail, right? <laughs>